Assalamualaikum. You told me about e-content. I've heard about e-tutorials. So please tell me, what are e-tutorials? E-tutorial is a type of e-content. The first quadrant of Swayam talks about many types of e-tutorials. The e-tutorials according to the Swayam guidelines is video and audio content organized in a structured manner. Why is this structuring important? Because it helps in making meaning of the content. So one is able to understand the concepts, the knowledge which is being given. There are many types of e-tutorials. So today we will discuss few of them which are mentioned in Swayam. So the first one will be the video. The video are the most popular of the e-tutorial formats. Videos give realistic visualization of a process or even a product making concept clarification or learning to be as realistic closer to the reality as possible. It can be used for explanations, showing processes, various phenomena and also those things which are new to the learners so that concept is easily understood. It shows processes, demonstrations, how to do, do it yourself and innumerable types of activities. In fact, Interdays has number of videos and in fact, especially YouTube has many videos which can be used for learning new things. For example, if there is a e-tutorial of a cell or its organelle, then you can go and see it there and understand in a 3D in the real possible situation. Then if you want to know about the software, how it works, then you can go and see a video, say if an open shot is a free video editor, you can go and learn from YouTube. The most popular of the video formats is MP4. The Indian MOOCs, the Swayam, predominantly uses video as the e-tutorial for its teaching learning activities in the online MOOC courses. Okay, tell me more about e-tutorials. Another important and interesting e-tutorial is animation. Animation seems to be everyone's favorite. It is a method which figures are manipulated in rapid succession at a speed so that it appears as a moving image. Earlier, traditionally, animations were made by making images by hand on a transparent cellulite sheets and then it was photographed and run at a speed so that movement was created and that was called animation. In the modern times where everything is computerized, today most animations are made with computer generated imagery. We call it as CGI. Animation adds liveliness to the content and the message we want to convey. Besides liveliness, it also helps in conceptual understandings as it gives clarity to the message by removing unnecessary elements because then it will be difficult for a, a learner to understand the main concept. Its flexibility allows even exaggeration that can be effectively used to convey the message loud and clear. It is quite useful in bringing the fun element in learning at all ages, especially at the young age. Animation has been very popular in television commercials, educational videos, both due to graphic appeal and the humor it provides to the learning situation. Animation is an area where there is a lot of scope and variety and there are 2D animations and 3D animations. It can vary from traditional animations like an animated horse you can see or to a computer generated animation like the one in which a classroom is being designed and developed using animation. Okay, I love watching animations. Mickey Mouse, Tom and Jerry and Bhim are my favorite. I have heard about simulations. Um, what is a simulation? Simulation is a near possible imitation of reality. It shows the operation of a process or any system that represents its working over a period of time. While making simulations, there are certain things you must keep in mind. First, the authenticity of the source. The source of information should be valid. Also, what are the relevant key characteristics you want to select and show in a simulation? 
It also uses simplifying approximations and assumptions within the simulation and the fidelity and the validity of simulation outcomes is very, very important. Simulation is an ongoing field of academic research and development, especially the computer simulations. It attempts to model a real life or a hypothetical situation on a computer so that it can be studied to see how the system works. By changing variables in the simulations, one can virtually see the behavior of a system and make predictions which may be made accordingly to the how the system works. It is a widely used in science subjects and now even the social science subjects are using it for better learning experiences. Simulations has many uses. It can be used in case where real equipment or situation is either too expensive or too dangerous to practice. We cannot allow learners to practice in a dangerous situation. So simulations provide virtual learning situations so that mistakes are not life-threatening or costly. So, in life-like experiences, we permit the learners to make mistakes so that in the real situations, they do not commit those mistakes. It also helps us to study the effect of alternatives. What if? when the real system cannot be engaged because it may not be accessible or it may be dangerous or unacceptable to engage or it is being designed but not yet built or it may be simply does not exist. So those alternatives, what ifs can be solved through the use of simulations. Simulations in education are somewhat like training simulations. They focus on specific tasks you want to teach to the learner. The purpose is learning and preparedness of learners for the real life situation. It's like readiness for the real life. For example, project managed simulations is increasingly used to train students and professionals in the art of and science of project management. Simulations is used in social sciences like history, anthropology, economics to illustrate social and political processes, especially in the educational setting so that they are prepared for the real life. In simulations, learners may assume different roles in different situations in a simulated society and then get engaged in negotiations, development activities, trade, diplomacy, use of force. These may be based on hypothetical situations so that they are prepared for dealing the real life. In fact, one of the popular simulations is the Model United Nation, which is also called Model UN or MUN, which is an educational simulation and an academic activity in which students learn about diplomacy, international relations and the role of United Nations and the deeper issues in speaking, debating, writing skills, in addition to critical thinking, analysis, teamwork and leadership abilities. In fact, military and space programs have been using simulations for a long time for training their professionals to provide readiness and preparedness for real life combat situations or space situations. Simulations are extensively used in training and in education and have got lot of scope in teaching learning activities. Very interesting. I hear about virtual labs. What are virtual labs? Virtual labs are very interesting as they give you lab experience virtually. Lot of work is being done across the world and there are many successful initiatives of virtual labs across the world like Labster, Path. In India, the government of India has taken initiative for virtual labs in education. In fact, VLAB is an initiative for higher education and OLAB is an initiative for school level education. In VLAB, there are a number of participating institutions like many IITs, Amrita, Vishwavidya Peetham, College of Engineering Pune, Dayalbag Education Institutions, they are developing virtual labs in various subjects like electronics and communications, computer science and engineering, electrical engineering and chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, biotechnical and biomedical engineering, civil engineering and the science subjects like physical sciences, chemical sciences, even 
there are virtual labs in communication skills. So it's an upcoming area where a lot of work is being done. The main philosophy behind VLAB is learning by doing because that is considered to be the most effective way of learning. But doing experiments is not possible at all times due to various reasons like exorbitant cost of resources, lack of resources, physical distances, sophisticated instruments are difficult to handle, learners are not allowed to play with them. Also good teachers who can teach these skills to the learners are also scarce, especially in the science and technology subjects. Also sharing of resources among institutions is also a challenge, managemental challenge. All these and many more challenges and also the advances in the present day internet and computer technologies have led to the concept of virtual labs which will facilitate students and researchers in enhancing their skills and knowledge through remote experimentation. Internet based experiments permit use and sharing of resources, knowledge, software and the data available on the web apart from encouraging skillful experiments being simultaneously performed at points separated in space at different places. The objectives of VLabs as outlined in the website are to provide remote access to labs in various disciplines of science and engineering for learners of higher education the undergraduate level, the postgraduate level, even the research scholars and also to enthuse students to conduct experiments by arousing their curiosity. Remote experimentation will help in learning basic as well as advanced concepts. To provide a complete learning management system around the virtual labs where the students can avail the various tools of learning including additional web resources, video lectures, animated demonstrations and self-evaluation. So they learn as a complete whole in an LMS to share costly equipments and resources among users which are available in limited numbers due to constraints of time and geographical distance. Virtual labs, the V labs, they allow the learners to, to do the experiment virtually by many ways like modeling where the physical phenomena which can at the best provide an approximation version of the real world experiment. By providing measured data for virtual lab experiments corresponding to the data previously obtained by the measurements on an actual system. So it is like giving them experience and letting them work on it. And then also remotely triggering an experiment in an actual lab which is remotely placed and providing the learners with the result of the experiment through computer interface. It is only possible with the help of internet and computers. In fact, virtual labs are progressively giving more effective and realistic learning experience to learners by providing additional inputs like accompanying audio and video, streaming of actual lab experiments and equipments. Okay. So many e tutorials are available. Great. Now I will use e tutorials for learning. Good part. E tutorials can be revisited as many times as the learner needs to master the concept. It is a very useful tool for effective learning. To sum up, we can see that e tutorials are digital content created and developed using digital devices and are made available over the internet and the digital devices for anybody to learn. E-tutorials are available in all subjects for all levels of education. Some of the e-tutorials you can use for Swayam courses are videos, animations, simulations, virtual labs. These provide learning opportunities for anyone, anytime, at any place. So today we have discussed different types of e-tutorials which constitute quadrant one of the Swayam courses. Thank you and happy learning.